Hi, everybody. Welcome tonight to Wednesday Night Fellowship and singing the classics as we come together and lift up our voices for the glory of the Lord. What a week this has been. What a, what a, a time of reflection and the opportunity to be able to just lift up the name of Jesus. I pray that you've been able to do that. And now as we share together tonight, I invite you to lift your voices and sing as we join together. overseas, Lord, from Scotland uh, to India, uh, in the States, from Idaho and uh, Montana, and Father, over on the west side of the state, Seattle, and Father, uh, back in Michigan, and I just, Lord, I'm not sure who, who all is on tonight, or who will be, but I pray that from our time together tonight, uh, they will just sense just a freedom in their spirit, and just worship you hymns, Lord, and just be able to very touch the, the very heart of God, Father, as we worship you together. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' precious, holy, holy name, amen and amen, amen. We're so glad that you joined us tonight. Um, if someone invited you here and it's the very first time that you've watched um, one of the services of New Beginnings Chapel, we want to say a special welcome to you. And if you have a smartphone and you can take it out, you can text the word welcome to 509-309-0958. And you're going to get a message back from us that just says that we're glad that you joined us. And also it's going to have a free gift attached to it saying that you can exchange that for a free beverage in our Connections Cafe following tonight's service. Well, since we're not together and we're online tonight, we'd like you to just hold on to that. And if you live here in our valley, We'd like to invite you back to join us here in our building, and we're going to share with you just a little bit later tonight about when that's going to happen, Lord willing. And so save that and come and introduce yourself to us, and we'll be happy to exchange that for each member of your family. So we're just glad everybody's joining us tonight. You know, I'm going to even go a step further on that with everybody who's been watching online for these last five, six weeks. Uh, I'm going to say that those of you who watched online when we have our first Sunday back, 
not just our visitors, but everybody. The cafe will be open. We're just not telling you yet. We're going to tell you at the end yeah, of the service. Yeah. Drinks will be on the house. Can I say that? Is that okay to say? <laughs> so the welcome to our guests, and then what do those within our, our own group do if they, in the case that they haven't done that yet? You can go to our website, which yes. is um, www.nbc. Oh, let me redo that again. Tim, would you go to the next slide for me? Yeah. One more. There we go. Our church website, www.mbcww.us is our church website. And you can go there and you can click on calendar and different events and things that are happening. And it will update you and keep you in the loop so that you know what is happening and going on. And if you're part of this congregation, you know what being in the loop already means. And so just go to the website and see all the new things that are there and the calendar of all the things that are taking place. Now, now there's a, a couple of families who I've gotten to know and, and shared online and so I'm going to ask you if you're in Idaho tonight I'm going to ask you to go and type in that phone number that Kay just gave you and type in loop because you guys are a part of the loop and we want to let you know what's going on and in fact for everyone whether you're overseas um, uh, Sammy if you're over in Scotland type that in uh, we want to let you know we want you in the loop and know what's going on so God bless you. Let's continue worshiping the Lord. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through the eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, we're standing.
has been like and just as I started out tonight it's been quite uh, quite an eventful week wasn't sure how the week was going to start but a good friend of mine who attends our church here his wife fell gravely ill and uh, we already knew that Lori had uh, stage 4 cancer uh, but due to not, not the virus or of the <clears throat> fears from the pandemic, um, but her, her body immune system just really um, started to shut down, and so on uh, Monday morning, um, uh, my dear friend and I jumped in a car and drove up to Spokane from our little burg here in Walla Walla, and we spent uh, the day um, with his precious wife. probably about 5.30 when the Lord called her home. And uh, I know that she loved the Lord. Uh, I know she'd given her heart to Christ. Um, they've been married 21 years. And this is a part of the calling, guys and gals. It's not just on Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings with a message. It's it's really pastoring. It's, it's ministering. And, and I, I love what I do. It is a calling. It's not just a job. People often ask me, well, when are you going to retire? Uh, you know what? I probably won't. Probably the Lord will call me home. And uh, someone else will be called into this position and pastor this church. But until that time comes, um, God has, has called Kay and I and Randy and Kelly to minister within this community. Going on uh, almost 15 years now. So when we come to this time of prayer requests, I, I really would love to know what you would like us to pray for. Not that, you know, we've got this, you know, uh, hotline to Jesus, but we know that we, we make requests and prayers are not answered the way that we want them answered. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to stop praying. I, I, I kind of like to think that we all have a hotline to Christ, um, but we know that our prayers are answered differently. And so tonight, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, 
my staff if they'll help me. Um, I think we can do this. I'm going to just open up my phone so that you can see, um, and I'm going to go over to our page just like you guys are at right now and see if we can't, if there are any requests, I want to I be able to bring these up. It's a little bit of a, a, a lag time, but uh, just want to see um, if there's any any requests tonight. some prayer requests. If you want us to pray for family members, if you want us to pray for um, uh, your job, um, the uncertainty of this whole pandemic, um, uh, our, our, our leaders, our president, our vice president, um, uh, just want to just take this moment. Um, and I'm, In fact, I'm going to just pray right now for my precious friend and uh, for those who are on our prayer list, and then we'll come back here in just a second as your prayer requests are made known to him. Father, tonight, thank you for your love. We praise you for your blessings. And as I was able to share with this precious friend of mine, Lord, um, all day as we were driving back from Spokane, just uh, seeking your face and uh, praising your name and uh, asking your direction and your guidance. And so, too, I do that tonight. I thank you for this body of believers. I thank you for their hearts, for the desires of... Uh, that they have, Father, for if those desires are your desires, then God, great and powerful things uh, are being done and will be done for the kingdom of God. So, Father, I, I pray for just a blessing upon our congregation right now, um, those who are in Idaho, uh, those, Father, who are overseas, uh, back east, the Midwest, uh, Florida, Texas, the Carolinas, uh, Oregon, Washington, wherever they may be tonight, Lord Jesus. Whoever will be watching this um, later on, as it's being recorded, uh, Father, they can they can send prayer requests after we've recorded this. I will get them and I will see them. And Father, I pray that uh, Lord, our hearts will be stirred and turned to you. So this is not just a ploy to get somebody to type in something. I really want to be agreed in prayer tonight with my brothers and sisters. Father, there's some, some brothers and sisters out there who are hurting, but there are also those out there who are rejoicing. I want to hear the rejoicing and the, the notes of praise, Father, for you are a good God. And you are our God, and you love us. And Father, whether there be any prayer requests that come in here in a moment, Lord Jesus, I just want this congregation, this congregation, Lord Jesus, whether they meet here in this house or they're across this, this world, Lord, this congregation, I value this opportunity to worship with him. And I don't take this lightly, Father. Tonight, oh Lord, we pray for Earl, our precious, precious brother Earl, Lord, who is just battling this Parkinson's, Father. We pray for uh, Rebecca tonight, Lord, as um, there are some uncertain uh, medical situations that she's dealing with for for Ruth and her back, Lord, for Melanie, uh, Lord Jesus, for uh, Jay, uh, Father, for uh, Kelly, for Kehlani, uh, Lord, I'm just going down for Cheryl Cowles tonight, Lord Jesus, um, and, and the uncertainty of what's going on, uh, Father, as she's been in the hospital, for Lord Jesus, for Wayne, for Bradley, for Brianna, uh, Father, uh, just as you bring these to mind, Lord Jesus, for Danny and, and Julie and for Danny and Ruthie and Father, uh, for, um, uh, oh my goodness, for Mike and uh, uh, Father, for family members that are here, for Monique, Lord Jesus. Um, God, touch now, we pray. Touch now, we pray, Father. Touch and be with our president, our vice president, our political leaders, our senators, our congressmen. Some people may think I pray too long, but God, you know what? There's so much to pray about and to bring to you. You know, we could have a whole hour and a half of prayer. God, we just want to bring our praises, our worship, and our requests to you. And so, Father, right now, I want to just bring these requests. Um, Bradley, do you have uh, another phone up there? Can you run it down to me real quick? Um, uh, you know, there's a joke here in our congregation that a pastor has one of the greatest phones in the world, um, but it only wants to work when it wants to work, and batteries want to stay uh, up as long as they want to stay up. And so, uh, as normal, 
uh, the battery just died. And so I have this. Let me jump. Let me jump over here and see. Um, okay, let's see. consequences of one person coming in with uh, the coronavirus, Father. It will affect all of us. And so, Lord, I pray that we will use wisdom and your insight that you give to us. All of that, Father, to say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your direction. Thank you for your, your touch tonight. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. is good, isn't he? All the time, all the time, God is good. Join with us now as we watch this video together. Here we are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're on. We're here. They're, we're live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear music in the background. Yeah. I'm sorry. Kay. It's just me. 
Kay was okay. saying, Kay was saying, I didn't uh, know we were, we're on. Not, we're not on yet. We're not. Surprise, surprise. So, so, so you Don't guys. Don't you love live? Yeah. If live you, is wonderful. If you watch Sunday morning, you saw we took kind of a blooper reel is what we were getting ready to go. And it's fun to see uh, our team in the back and they go, uh, no, no, go. You guys are live. And no, no, we're not. Yes, we are. I yeah, still hear really music, are. though, anyway. <laughs> I hear music all the time. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Table Talk uh, with uh, Pastor Tim and Kaylani, uh, I've, I've used that before. Table talk with, with uh, Tim and Kay. Um, so we have a couple of things. We have some breaking news. We have some breaking news. What is we your do. breaking news? Tell me. So we have made a decision. Yes, we have. We've chosen a date. Yes, we have. For our relaunch, regathering, reuniting, whatever you want to call it. We're going to call it a celebration Sunday. Celebration Sunday. So, and so. we're excited to yes. announce yes. that yes. our relaunch is going to be. Yes. It's going to be Sunday, June, June 14th. So mark that on your calendars. Get ready for that because it's going to be Celebration Sunday. There will be ah. no life class. Yeah. Um, just our regular service at 1030 a.m. So there's a few guidelines that have to be in place, but um, we're excited about that. It's going to be a fun Celebration Sunday. So mark that on your calendar, Sunday, June 14th, 1030 a.m. here in the building. Well, you know, a lot of people have been wondering about, you know, our relaunch Sunday. And, and I met with several pastors on a Zoom meeting on Tuesday. And some churches have already started to meet. Uh, we are now in phase two uh, from our Washington governor uh, as of today, as we're alive. And... Uh, so with us, um, here's, here's a couple of thoughts. People have said, well, why are you not uh, reopening? You know, we, we uh, are nonprofit and we don't have to do this. And uh, no, listen, folks, um, we are a, a church um, under the, the authority of God Almighty. And, and I believe that. But we are also, uh, we have to respect our government. Um, and our government's not going against uh, anything that um, we're doing, um, I genuinely do believe that there uh, has been a seriousness with this coronavirus. Is it as serious as they thought it would be? Um, I, I'm not going to say, but um, I spent the whole day yesterday in a hospital wearing a mask um, with a dear brother and uh, in a huge hospital, and there were nine cases in that hospital in a separate area of the building um, and people say well, okay so why aren't you relaunching why didn't you relaunch before well folks in this time in this time that we've been getting ready uh, we've been preparing the building and we're just not quite there yet they may say why don't you why don't you start this Sunday why don't you start next Sunday well we've got a couple of things that we're remodeling we're rebuilding um, we realized that there were some areas of the entrance way that um, needed to be repaired and so uh, by that time, there's things within the sanctuary that we're working on. So now, more than anything, it's really uh, getting the building prepared, um, doing the social distancing and taking that. So and we're so, excited about yep. that. And you did spend yesterday um, up in Spokane at Sacred Heart. And the, again, we just um, want to tell Andy that we love you, Andy, and um, we're praying for you and lifting you up. And we know that this is a... A difficult time and we're thankful that we get to walk the journey with you and so please know that you have our hearts and our prayers um, mm -hmm. I wanted to share with you a couple of things yeah. um, a couple of things on this day in history okay so May 27th May this 27th. day in history what in the world happened on May 26th <laughs> well in 1937 yes. they opened the Golden Gate Bridge seriously yep May 27th ah. 1937 so that's a really old bridge and then in 1977 the very first woman raced in the Indianapolis 500 what year in 1977 Wow and her name was Janet Guthrie uh-huh guess where she finished um, she no I'm not even gonna take a chance on that one <laughs> she finished 29th out of 33 Wow <laughs> she didn't wow. do very well wow. I don't know anything about her I don't know if she continued racing or not but uh, you know, bless her Somebody for being the first one Somebody out there may know her did. and we may get a call. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in 1995, mm -hmm. Superman was paralyzed. Oh. Um, Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. He was paralyzed in 1995. And he actually lived until 2004. Mm -hmm. And he passed away from complications. He um, 
took an antibiotic that actually caused some reactions and he passed away, but Superman was paralyzed in 1995. And mm -hmm. then there were some very famous people that were born on this day. I'm only gonna share with them, you two of them. Okay. In 1911, they May were both 26th. born. No, May 27th, 1911. Oh, May 27th, okay. Both of these men were born, 1911. Okay. Uh, 1911. It's a really long time ago. Okay, who was it? So that would make them 109 years old if they were still alive. Mm -hmm. The first one was Vincent Price. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Your dad always reminded me of Vincent yeah, Price. Yeah, he did, he did. And also born on May 27th, 1911, the 38th president of the United States, Hubert Humphrey. Wow. 1911. And you know what? It, the crazy thing is, is that uh, I think you remember uh, Vincent No, I Price. don't remember 1911. <laughs> no, I think you remember Vincent Price. <laughs> I do uh, remember Vincent him. Price, yes. And, and had Hubert Humphrey already passed away? By the no, no, no. He was alive in the 60s and I remember. 70s. I remember seeing him. I don't know if it was memories of videos that I saw of him or if it was because he was still alive. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't know when he passed do you, away. Do you remember the Three Stooges? Not personally. <laughs> I mean, but do you remember the, 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 the characters? Yes. You know, uh, Mo, Curly, uh, and um, oh, Mo and Curly, Larry. and Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. <laughs> and then there was uh, a couple of others that stepped in. Do you know that I actually saw the Three Stooges live on stage at the Spokane Coliseum. Well, that's um, better than seeing them dead. No, I'm serious. I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's amazing to think, uh, you know, of how, how time has, has spanned. And you mentioned, you know, Vincent Price, you mentioned uh, Hubert Humphrey, uh, John Kennedy. Uh, I was like uh, 12 years old um, uh, when his life was taken. Um, uh, I, can, I can, I mean, Dwight Eisenhower. I mean, it's hard to imagine how much, I was talking with family, just the other day, and how life has changed so much for us. You know, I used to ask my grandparents, hey, what, what, what is different for you? And they would say, oh my goodness, you know, I rode on buckboards and covered wagons, and then cars came in, and then planes came in, and then rockets to the moon, and all of that, and now our kids ask. So what's, what's yeah, no, changed? They don't know what it means to not have internet. I mean, we yeah. didn't have internet or email or any of that we stuff. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers. No, our first computer um, was one of those Radio Shack TRS-80s. Yeah. That had the big floppy black yeah, discs in it. Yeah, I thought those were it. so it cool. Remember that? One. Yeah, we thought it was really cool. I think it had like 24 things of then RAM. About, then, <laughs> about, then about a 298 or two, 298? 286. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah, you were real excited when we got a Pentium. Yeah, well, I so. crashed that thing with two uh, things that I put on that very yeah. first one. It cost $1,500 for that very first one. It's amazing how time has, has changed things. This and is so a lousy day in history for weather, by the way. Why is that? Um, back in 1771. Wow, you're really going back. I mean, 1771, are you, are you before we were even officially a country. In Virginia, mm -hmm. it rained for 12 straight days. And on May 27th, mm -hmm. 1771, Yes. The rain came roaring through a valley in Richmond, Virginia, okay. and it wiped out 151 people. I'm sure in 1771 there weren't that, that many. That was, that there was, weren't that was, a lot of people that, already here, so that was a significant number. A crowd. Yeah. yeah, so it wiped out their entire town. And then in 1942, an F2 tornado touched down somewhere here in the United States, but only a barn was destroyed. No one died, but an F2 tornado. And then again, in 1896, <laughs> a tornado today. touched down in St. Louis, killed yeah. 306 mm. people. And this one was pretty significant, this tornado that touched down in St. Louis. Um, it caused $13 million in damage in 1896, $13 million in damage. That's a huge That's number. and. Uh, so that touched down. And then again, another tornado in 1997 touched down in Gerald, Texas. It only killed 27, but 27 is still significant. Yeah. It was an F5 tornado, and they had 122 mile an hour wind. So three tornadoes have touched down in history on this day. So I'm just saying if you live in the tornado alley, mm -hmm. this is not a good day in history. This is <laughs> bad well, tornadoes on this day. You know, it's not on this day, but uh, the National Mental Health uh, Institute has stated that there are phobias that people have, uh, phobias that affect them and uh, cause them fear. I mean, fear is a, a phobia of danger. Just like that video and that we just watched. 
mm -hmm. about fear and being anxious and all that stuff. This is a day in time, a season in time where there's a lot of fear and yes. a lot of anxiety going yeah. on. Well, you know, as I, I said Sunday, and I want to bring it back up, there's 10, uh, really 10, top 10 uh, phobias that people have and uh, the fear of open spaces. I don't it, get that yeah, one. No, open fear spaces. Fear of open spaces. Yeah. I guess that's the opposite of claustrophobia. Uh, right, well it's coming. Fear of confined spaces. So you got uh, the total opposite of You this. need to all just get balanced, just choose the middle. Yep, fear of flying. And we, I we used can, to be afraid to fly. We can understand that. But then I flew all the time. Yeah, which goes along with fear of heights. And I'm not you afraid know. of heights. Uh, I was on the Space Needle, uh, not on the needle, but I mean on the observation deck, and I was walking around it, and I could feel that, just that fear, that concern. Um, this is all ad lib, guys, so we really don't know what we're going to say, so we kind of uh, uh, crack up our team in the back when we start talking about things. But um, I could feel that fear from just the height of, of looking over um, the fear of spiders and insects. You can identify with that a little I'm bit. I'm not afraid of them. I just don't like them. Yeah. But I, I mean, just don't if, like them. If one is crawling up your arm and is Yeah, I wouldn't like that. I don't know that I'd be, yeah. Bite your you ears. can stop that. Now. Yeah. <laughs> fear of snakes. Yeah. Now those, I, yeah. yeah. I don't like spiders and snakes. Yeah. Yep. No, no, no um, snakes. No, no reptiles. And this has really been in the last uh, several years. I mean, since... 2001 really hit terrorist attacks. People are, are fearful of terrorist attacks. I can see that. Which is also the fear of death. But again, do you know what the number one fear or phobia is? I'm going to ask the team. It's back. a good you, thing it's not do you, ours. Do you, do you know what it is? What the biggest fear is? No, nope, the they don't know. The biggest fear is speaking in public. Speaking in public. And um, as I said Sunday, um, uh, who was it? Oh, Jerry Seinfeld uh, did a bit about being being fearful, and uh, as the story goes, um, he said that a, a person is uh, is has more fear speaking to in public than death. They have more fear of speaking in public than death, and at a funeral, a person would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. Yes, yeah, see, I don't get that one either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that one. Um, well, because you and I have traveled for, oh, goodness, all, well, all of our married life, and we've shared, and we've talked with people. We've raised our kids on the, on the, the, the concert and evangelistic field, and so you're, you feel very comfortable, you know, talking in front of, uh, you know, people. And so uh, share with us, uh, if you would, Kay, uh, this was a, a scripture that I shared Sunday morning, Mark 6. 45, 53, Brianna, do we have that on the screen for them to be able to see as well? Okay, go it ahead. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because all they, they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesis. Genesaret, mm -hmm. and anchored there. Okay, now, now I could go down through this scripture, and I could I could share again of what you know I was wanting to say, but um, you know I, I wanted to give you the opportunity, and and also the folks who are with us watching tonight, uh, if they would like to ask you know questions or wonder about uh, anything in the scripture. I mean, anything come to mind for you that you wanted to to just ask or or talk about? Well, I'm mindful of a time when we were out on a lake mm -hmm. and it was stormy. Um, our daughter, Lindsay, was, I think she was about four or five months old. She wasn't very big. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful day. It was just like today. It was gorgeous, blue skies. And we rented this little boat with my sister and my brother-in-law. And, and we went out um, on the lake up at Cascade, Idaho. 
on the reservoir there. And we were having a great time until a storm rolled in. Mm -hmm. And it rolled in really, really fast. And before we knew it, there were like four and five foot swells on this lake and the wind was just really howling. And it was too rough to even get back to shore. And I remember my sister, she took Lindsay and put her inside her own life jacket oh, yeah. and held her and sat down on the floor of the boat. And I remember her saying, sweetheart, if we ever get out of this alive, auntie promises you I'll never let them do this to you ever again. Um, but it was scary. It was really, really scary. And there was an island in the middle of this lake. And it was the only thing that we could get close to for safety. And we, we made our way there. And there was a lot of rocks and but we managed to get on this little island and take shelter under a few little trees and uh, until the storm passed by but i remember that fear of being out there in the middle and feeling very helpless now if somebody had started walking out there onto the lake toward me i think i would have been <laughs> a little bit freaked out myself well i believe that i believe the holy spirit was with us that day i can i can remember that it was, a, it was a very spooky time. I wasn't driving the boat, and I normally did drive the boat. We had somebody else who was cutting through those waves. And um, there, there's probably a time that you've had uh, uh, a moment of fear or wondered. Um, I think the thing about that, too, was where we found safety. Mm -hmm. We found safety on the rock. Yeah. In the middle of the lake, in the middle of the storm, it was on the rock that we found safety. And I think that's what Jesus reminds us all the time is that he is the rock and he's our safe place. Well, if you, if you remember in the scripture, uh, Jesus wasn't in the boat. Jesus isn't in the boat. He, he actually made the guys go get into the boat and leave, and, and you know, they have to wonder. Do you ever, the wonder. They do you ever the wonder. think that the Lord has just a little bit of an ornery sense of humor? He knew <laughs> what was coming, uh -huh. and yeah, I mean, it's kind of like he sat there going, sitting back going, ah, know what's coming well, well how i mean the guys are in the boat i mean do you think that they were wondering where's another boat how are you going to get over here well i mean we're gonna we're gonna go across and are we gonna come back i mean there were no cell phones they couldn't computer text you know or anything like that and and he says go ahead of them and so the the, the scripture tells us that jesus is praying on the mountain for these guys he's seeing them out in the now now to me it was dark it was windy it was I mean that's my understanding of what this was like and yet it says Jesus was watching them he was watching them uh, and he was praying for them the son of God was praying for these guys in the midst of the storm um, the storm was blowing in their faces um, against all odds um, they were rowing, but they were, you know, taking two steps backwards. Yeah, I can't every imagine step being in forward. the middle of a storm with a rowboat. Yeah, <laughs> there were no motors. A uh, well, rowboat. Well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There was a sail. I think it, I think it was a sailboat. Well, I think it had sails on it. Uh, that's why the wind was, was Well, they it. had oars in the water, so. Yeah, yeah. Jesus sees us and prays for us in our most difficult times, guys and gals. I was sharing with some folks today as I was coming through Milton Freewater, and there's just lots of things going on in their business, and uh, you know they're wondering what's going to transpire, and um, uh, and yet there was a calm, knowing that Jesus has it in control. Jesus has it in control. I believe, and, and let's stop here just for a minute. And talk, do, do you think that Jesus still speaks to the Father on our behalf? Do you think that he still prays? Well, the Bible behalf? tells us that he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's the one of the things that I love about the personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that we don't have to pray to a saint who died, mm -hmm. you know, thousands of years ago. We can go straight to Jesus. Yeah. And He's interceding on our behalf even before we call on his name. He's already. He sees us just like he did the disciples. Even before we cry out to him, he's already interceding on our behalf. And I love that, that we don't have to wait for someone else to pray to. We can go straight to him. But he's already on top of it because he already sees us. David felt that way in Psalms 139, 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of the sand. 
See, something came to mind as I was getting ready for this message. Jesus doesn't pray for us. He, he, he doesn't pray for us to avoid the storms. I know that that, what? He doesn't, he doesn't. But um, what do you think? Do you remember, what do you think Jesus prays for us? Well, it's like I said earlier, it's kind of like he almost has a little bit of an ornery sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knew the storm was going to come. And he told him, go get in the boat, and I'm staying here. Mm -hmm. And scary as that is, I mean, I think that he allows us to go through those times so that he can show up and show us that he is there for us, that he is watching mm -hmm. over us, and that he is protecting us. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, as I look at this, and I think about the chapters in Luke, um, we, this conversation that went on between Simon Peter and Jesus. And, and here, here Simon Peter has says, I'm not going to, I, if they all turn from you, I will never forsake you. And he says, oh, Peter, Peter, you know what? You're going you're gonna to rebuke me three times before the, the, the rooster crows. No, no, no. And, you know, you can just see this, this angry. But then in this conversation, he says, Peter, I need to let you know something. Satan has asked to sift you like the grains. He's asked to sift you. And, and what does the scripture say? He says, he has asked to sift you, but I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. That your faith will not fail. He didn't tell Simon, you know, Satan asked to sift you, and I told him, no way, no way. He said, I'm going to pray for you that your faith won't fail, and when you are changed, strengthened, you go and strengthen your brothers. Um, I mean, this was, I mean, he could have prayed. He could have said to Satan, no, you're not going to, he could have said to Satan for a lot, no, uh, God said, no, you're not. But yet, what happens is that he prays that we will endure the storm. Because he gives us free will. If, if, he just, if he just solved it for us and everything, everybody, uh, free will would be out the window. We'd be puppets. He'd be saying, you know, go here, do this, go do that. Um, I think that I was sharing this in staff meeting on Tuesday. Tuesday, yes, yesterday. Um, my days just get all mm -hmm. mixed up mm -hmm. and lost because everything is out of sync. But yesterday in staff meeting, I was sharing this with our staff and leadership. Um, I truly believe that what we're going through right now, not only in our community, our church, our nation, and globally, I really, really believe with all my heart that this is a sifting mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And this story just even more so anchors it in my soul that God knew all of this mm -hmm way before this is not a surprise to him none of this yeah. pandemic is a surprise to him yeah. and he knew that the storm was coming and he has been watching us and just like when he said to peter he said you know you're going to be sifted and i pray that you will your faith will not fail mm -hmm. and i think that is exactly what is happening with the church mm -hmm. at large well people may be saying well i pray that I, would, I wish that Jesus was praying for me. Folks, let me tell you, the this, this scripture that comes to mind, Hebrews 7.25, therefore, uh, um, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. And he I is think, interceding I think on he's, our behalf He's interceding right now. on our behalf, each of us individually. I think he's interceding for the church. Mm -hmm. And I really, truly believe that he's praying and he is telling us as a church, church, you are being oh, yeah. sifted. Yeah. But I pray that through all of this, fear doesn't overtake you and that your faith doesn't fail. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that he's watching to see how the church comes through this. Yeah. And I think it's a powerful time before we come back together. We're going to come back together here in just a few weeks. I think it's a time to be on our knees and pressing in and praying because, and not be fearful. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to be fearful. We need to be smart right. and wise, but not fearful. Um, 
he tells us that in the midst of the storm, be smart, but don't be fearful because I'm here. I got this. And we can come through this as a church. And I think we're going to see an incredible harvest and God really do something in the church. And I think those who don't press in and have not made that real firm commitment and relationship to Jesus Christ, um, maybe they just believe in Jesus, but they really don't have a relationship with him. I really believe that as the sifting happens, Mm -hmm. we're going to see those fall away. And then those who remain, it's going to be great things. Great times are coming. It's, I'm excited for this. Okay. So let me ask you, you've been talking about sifting, sifting, and, and, and Jesus is saying to Simon Peter, you're uh, sifted. Okay. Um, do you know what a flower sifter is? Yes, I have one. You I've used one. it before. <laughs> okay, so so tell everybody, what does a flower sifter do? Why why do why did they use the a sifter before the really pure flower? Oh, there was all kinds of things. Flour was ground by stones, right? Rubbing against each other. That's how it worked in the flour mills. And sometimes bits of that stone would actually break off and end up in the flour. Mm-hmm. And you would not want to make bread with that because if you bit down on a stone, you could break a tooth. It just wouldn't be pleasant. And so, and other things could get into the grain and into the flour. And so part of it was it wasn't purified. Um, there were things that contaminated it, got into it, foreign objects. And the other thing is today, even though that's not usually an issue, today though, sometimes flour is just really dense. Mm-hmm. If you've ever done any baking, it's just really dense. And when you sift it, it becomes very fine. Mm-hmm. And, and it becomes um, usable in a way for like sifting it helps to make cakes rise. Mm-hmm. And I think what an incredible analogy because there's a lot of times we're really dense. Yep, I was going to say that. Really dense. What did he say to the disciples? You guys are so dull. You're so, yeah, you know. just dense. <laughs> we just don't get it. And in that sifting process, it allows something to happen. And the product that's left after it's been sifted is this light, fluffy yeah. consistency. And it causes the cake to rise. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, when we get sifted, it's the same kind of thing. The impurities are removed, and it leaves us in a condition, our souls and our spirits in a condition where we're able to rise. Right, right. And it's an well, incredible and analogy of, th- of being sifted. That's why, as people have said, why am I going through this? You guys and gals, we're, we're, we're being sifted all the time. It's the choices that we make, uh, how we are going to come through this by... Uh, allowing the enemy to sift us and keep us where we're at, or we're going to make a choice of not falling prey to his schemes. Um, Christ, I believe, is watching over us. He's praying for us. And uh, I, I, I sang this song uh, Sunday morning, and since this is our, our uh, Wednesday night hymn, uh, let's, let's do this little chorus again, this hymn that Ethel Waters did. Um, you go ahead and do the, the lead on I'll do the harmonies, okay? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. For his eyes is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. For his eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me hey you know what we should sing together more often (laughs) we've done that a few times you know that reminds me of a song Um, that's an old song that song's been around for a long long time yeah 
Um, but there's a song that's um, a modern day worship chorus. And when you were speaking on Sunday, uh -huh. reminded me of this um, song. And it's called Fear is a Liar. Oh, yeah. And if you think of, is it a, in the tense of a gender, of he, fear being he, or the liar being he. Um, so it says, when he told you you're not good enough, when he told you you're not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, that you'll never be enough. Fear? He is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear? He is a liar. He will rob your rest, steal your happiness, cast your fear in the fire, because fear? He is a liar. When he told you you were troubled, you'll forever be alone. When he told you you should run away, you'll never find a home. When he told you you were dirty and you should be ashamed. When he told you you could be the one that grace could never change. Fear? He is a liar. He will take your breath and steal your happiness. So cast your fear in the fire. Because fear? He is a liar. Let your fear... Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall. Your love is all I feel. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall. Your love is all I feel. Hallelujah. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your rest, steal your happiness, but cast your fear in the fire. Because fear, he is a liar. That's a good song, Kay. You know, as we come to a close of our time tonight, um, about 7.30, and uh, as we take a look uh, and, and we talk about these scriptures, Colossians 1, 16 through 17, all things were created by him, Jesus, and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Um, the life lesson is as Jesus walks into the middle of our greatest fears. Now listen to this, everybody and says, it's just me, don't be afraid. And the enemy says, oh, you got to do this all by yourself. But as that song says, he's a liar. Here's a liar. Um, and, and the Lord is with us. He came to the aid of the guys uh, on that boat. He came to the aid uh, of those who uh, are, are hurting and suffering. And he's coming to your aid. Why? Because he loves you. Psalm 27 one says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I what? fear. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is faithful. He will not leave you and he will not forsake you. And then quickly the scene that we look at, Jesus is calming the storm. Uh, he said to the wind, he said to the rain, he said, be still. And the disciples, even after all they had seen, honey, every, after everything they had seen, they said, truly, surely you must be the son of God. It amazes back, me. Back to the dense flower. Yeah, there you go. There you <laughs> really go. Really dense. And so Jesus is calming the sea. Um, he's calming the rain. Um, if you look at fear, uh, they were afraid they were going to sink and they were going to die. And normally fear is a, a, a concern of danger. And so too for us. The lesson, any problem over my head is already under the feet of Jesus. Can you say that again? Anything that is over my head causing me fear is already under the feet of Jesus. Read Ephesians 1.20, honey, for us as we get ready to leave. He, God, raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. He's and got that authority. God That's placed right. all things under his feet. That's right. And That's God right. raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I love John 16, 33. Mm -hmm. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. But take heart because I've already overcome the world. He He's already defeated. Come the world. Yep. Everybody, um, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We, we uh, try to make sure that we are striving to uh, to, to be just an hour with you. We know that you've got a great schedule uh, ahead of you. Please pray for us. We pray for you. We lift you up. 
Um, let's just pray as we close. Thank you, Father, for your love, your tender mercies, your guidance and strength. Blessings on you. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, may he encourage and strengthen and lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, everybody. We're excited to see you guys coming up on the 14th, uh -huh, 14th of, June. of June. So make sure you mark it on your calendars and plan to be here, 1030. Love you guys. God bless. Have a great week.